much. Meanwhile, House GOP Whip Steve Scalise also weighing in, calling the current relief bill, quote, Pelosi's payoff to progressive acts. But is there any room for negotiation? With me now, the Wall Street Journal's associate editor, John Bussey, Kelsey Ballar with the Independent Women's Forum, and Johanna Mosca, uh, former aide to President Obama. Kelsey, let me start with you. I mean, uh, you just heard Representative Banks saying they're going to ram it through, and certainly they are going to have to ram it through. Some of these things here are really worrisome, the Planned Parenthood stuff, subsidies based on race, and, and any money that flows from our, our taxpayers to the Confucius Institute, I think is a huge red flag. You're absolutely right. And I'll say as a parent, what's most alarming to me is the fact that Democrats want to give public schools over $100 billion more in funding uh, without attaching that funding to any requirements that schools actually reopen for in-person learning. I'm still not over the fact that we as a country, during one of our most trying, difficult times, were able to figure out how to still put on the Super Bowl, but not how to get our kids back in school to learn in person. This is unacceptable. It's unforgivable. The fact is that we still have $60 billion in unspent funding for public schools from the last COVID relief bill. And what Democrats want to do now is give public schools more money uh, to fund, you know, the, these sort of pet projects that you're seeing all across this bill to ensure this ideology seeps into schools, to right. ensure unions in, are able to continue to put themselves over children. This should be a huge wake-up call for parents across the country. Johanna? Yeah, uh, I watched um, the Republicans say that uh, it is a critical time for investment. I watched President Trump talk about a critical time for investment, and it really is a critical time for investment in the American people. And so what you're seeing is the um, administration really push through a package which is targeted and helps all people. You know, I think all of us were very outraged at some of the waste of the last PPP rollout when some of these, um, you know, folks got money and spent it on cars. And that shouldn't be happening. The administration today actually targeted small businesses um, because they're at the heart of this administration's support. So they, they rolled out the PPP directly targeting businesses with less than 20 people. And as part of this, I don't think it's a problem to talk about when we are paying the wages of workers, we should be paying a living wage for workers who are hurting across this country. And I, I couldn't agree more as a mom of a public school kid who is uh, remote. We've got to figure out how to get our kids back to school, but we can't just say it. We've got to work together in our communities because the local communities have yeah. as much power as the federal government. John, the, the semantics game uh, plays here, right? John is calling these investments. Uh, a lot of Democrats that don't call it stimulus. Uh, President Biden himself calls it a rescue package, which to me hints that the stimulus package will be next. <laughs> so work us through all of these things because, uh, you know, obviously everyone's got good points, but $1.9 trillion is a lot of money, and, and it, it's, I think, worrisome that not enough seems to be going to the actual pandemic. Well, it's a stimulus program. It's uh, out of the ordinary because we're in extraordinary times. We have a global pandemic uh, that was allowed to get out of hand in the United States. And so you have to now invest to correct things. You have to spend money on propelling the vaccine to help states uh, vaccinate people, to help schools prepare for kids to get back by having a safe environment for them. That means additional equipment in the schools. Uh, so there's a lot of spending that is going into addressing the pandemic. There's also spending that's going into addressing the fact that the economy has been knocked back on its heels uh, by the mismanagement of the coronavirus uh, problem from the outset. Uh, it got bad and the economy got bad with it. And so you're seeing stimulus going into additional unemployment checks uh, to people, the $1,400 payment. Now, a lot of this is politics. It's not getting rammed through. It's being uh, addressed by both houses of Congress. There'll be a vote. Um, it may get passed by the House. It may not. It's a slim majority of Democrats right. now, only 10 seats. And the Senate uh, may not agree to the $15 minimum wage uh, that the Biden administration has proposed. It's normal politics, give and take. We want this. You want that. Let's see where we can compromise. 
uh, and we'll see whether or not this program goes through. It's not it's not a foregone right, so, conclusion. So no, well, the minimum wage part is certainly uh, up in the air. Uh, South Carolina Republican Tim Scott, in fact, telling Neil and Cavuto Live that it would kill up to 4,000 jobs and he would prefer a smaller increase. Take a listen. Slowing the growth of the minimum wage over a longer period of time and not going to $15 an hour, going to $10 or $11 an hour, it's at least a place to start the discussion. I'm open to the discussion. I am a free market guy. I, I believe that the free enterprise system actually increases wages faster. You know, Kelsey, uh, this is another one. You know, we saw the CBO report, uh, so maybe there's something for everyone there, but we do know it's uh, over a million jobs lost. Uh, we heard from the NFIB, which is probably the most important institution when it comes to small businesses. They're saying it would be an unmitigated disaster, particularly for restaurants and leisure, which only lost 600,000 jobs in the last two months. Uh, you know, in the meantime, and I brought it up earlier with the Republican Congress, uh, congressman, right now, first quarter GDP could be as high as 10%. We are, we're, there are pockets of this economy that are coming on like gangbusters. What hurt us more than anything else was the shutdown. We're going to reward those states that shut down their citizens, that had the most job layoffs. Fine, we got to help fellow Americans, but $15 on top of that seems like a bridge too far. Your thoughts? You're right. This bill does not put children first by funding schools that refuse to teach children in person, and this bill does not put small businesses first by uh, mandating a minimum, minimum wage hike on them while so many of them are closing their doors, some permanently. We wouldn't have the wild success of the Barstool Sports Fund if small businesses were doing okay now. It is unethical to tell them that they have to pay their employees more right now where they can't even pay their bills to have employees in the first place. We need to remember the real minimum wage in this country is zero dollars. We do not want a single more American losing their job as a result of this pandemic. Right. Uh, the, the CBO said our economy without COVID relief can bounce back. It likely will bounce back without any stimulus by uh, as early as this summer. Of course, we all want targeted and temporary relief, all but right, we well, cannot do this I, massive I, you know, spending. Listen, I, I think we all, yeah, we all want it. We all want to help those who need help, but there's a lot in here. By the way, it wasn't 4,000 jobs, 4 million jobs. Thank you all very much.